Okay. All right, everybody. <laughs> so welcome to Persuasive Writing. Thank you for coming. Um, we're gonna do a few things today. Take a look at the objectives. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get into the Common Core and look at the progression of persuasive writing standards throughout the elementary grades, especially knowing that we have some folks here who service multiple grades. I think that will be helpful just to, so you can see the range and the progression um, and the expectations for students as they progress through the grades. We're going to be compiling a list of characteristics of persuasive writing and we're going to be doing that by really looking at examples very closely. And these are examples you'd be able to use with students. Um, we're going to actually create a topic list and draft a piece of persuasive writing um, that you can use with students as a model. And we're going to build a collection of graphic organizers to use with struggling writers. So especially for our SPED folks in the room and our ELL folks, um, hopefully that will be helpful. Um, I think the biggest thing to think about is when you're going through the writers, this writer's workshop unit, um, being prepared and having your own list of topics and whatnot to use with kids and it's something you definitely have to prep for beforehand. So I have some models that we can look at um, but coming up with my own list I found it even trickier than like narrative and whatnot just thinking of like appropriate topics to share with kids um, that you could write persuasively about. So we'll get into that a bit too. Um, so the agenda, first thing we're going to do is take a close look at the standards and then we'll actually walk through a writer's workshop unit. So we'll look at mentor text, um, identify the characteristics, create an idealist, draft, um, look at the graphic organizers, we'll go through the revising and editing process and then we'll do a share. All right. So you have a document in front of you with the progression of the persuasive writing standards from the Common Core. Um, I just pulled the exact standards out from the core. And what I want you to do is take a few minutes to go through, grab highlighters on your table and the boxes if you want, um, highlight keywords and just any general observations, things that you notice about the standards as we move from K to 5. So I'll give you a few minutes to look that over and then you can talk at your tables um, about what you notice. Just take another minute and talk at your table about any observations, any keywords that you found that kept repeating, um, any ideas that kept repeating, or how things changed over time. Mm. as the grades increased. Mm -hmm. um, and then it went from, you know, supply 
a reason, mm -hmm. supply multiple reasons. Yes, but then multiple reasons with support. Yep. Then the structure kind of yep. gets in, in like the third, fourth, and fifth. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but then it's multiple reasons, and then um, mm -hmm. supported by facts, and facts mm -hmm. and details for fourth and fifth. So really digging deep, like a level deeper mm -hmm. of supporting that okay. opinion or point of view. I also noticed that a closure or concluding mm -hmm. statement yeah. was so yeah, it just builds and builds and it's deeper and deeper and deeper into the text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or in, yeah. in third grade of creating an organizational structure. Mm -hmm. okay. And then they have to connect. We took, we're starting tomorrow. Oh, that's good. You're starting tomorrow? We took the tour of the school. Perfect. Um, oh good. Excellent. Tomorrow we'll start writing our first Good. Okay, good. Um, so one of the things I always find comforting just as a classroom teacher is thinking about if we go through the unit this year um, and kids are still kind of struggling with it, they're going to get the same thing the following year and the following year, just with a little bit more depth. So I find it helpful to see that progression. Um, I think it also makes it a bit more manageable too with the younger grades, thinking about K and one, um, when you hear persuasive writing or research writing in those you know early childhood grades it can be a bit daunting um, to hear that but to see what persuasive writing really looks like with a kindergartner you know they're telling you about a favorite book and a reason why they like that book well most kids can do that you know even if they're doing it orally at first and then translating it into writing um, so I like that it really breaks things down for you in that way any key words that kept popping up reason 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 so giving reasons support fact and details facts details closure closure including statement um, anything else topics books okay topics books organizational structure okay all right good so i hope that helped just to think about where your kids are coming from um, in the grade before and where they'll be heading afterwards all right, so typically um, one of the things you want to be doing when you start a unit is finding a good piece of mentor text. Um, Click Clack Moo is one of them and happens to be one of my favorites. I know it's built into the second grade story town. I'm going to do a quick read aloud um, and this is on both K to 2 and 3 to 5 <coughs> mentor text list. So this would be a good one to pull, um, you know, even if you're working with fourth or fifth graders. It's funny. They like it. Um, and I want you to listen as a reader and think about what makes this text a good piece of persuasive writing or sections of this a good piece of persuasive writing. So Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type by Doreen Cronin. Farmer Brown has a problem. His cows like to type. All day long he hears click clack moo, click clack moo, click clack moo. At first he couldn't believe his ears. Cows that type? Impossible. Click clack moo, click clack moo, clickety clack moo. Then he couldn't believe his eyes. Here's a letter. Dear Farmer Brown, the barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. It was bad enough the cows had found the old typewriter in the barn. Now they wanted electric blankets. No way, said Farmer Brown, no electric blankets. So the cows went on strike. They left a note on the barn door. Sorry, we're closed, no milk today. No milk today, cried Farmer Brown. In the back background, he heard the cows busy at work. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. The next day, he got another note. Dear Farmer Brown, the hens are cold too. They'd like electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. The cows were growing impatient with the farmer. They left a new note on the barn door. Closed. No milk, no eggs. No eggs, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard them. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Cows that tie pens on strike. Who ever heard of such a thing? How can I run a farm with no milk and no eggs? Farmer Brown was furious. Farmer Brown got out his own typewriter. Dear cows and hens, there will be no electric blankets. You are cows and hens. I demand milk and eggs. Sincerely, Farmer Brown. 
Zuck was a neutral party, so he brought the ultimatum to the cows. The cows held an emergency meeting. All the animals gathered around the barn to snoop, but none of them could understand Moo. All night long, Farmer Brown waited for an answer. Duck knocked on the door early the next morning. He handed Farmer Brown a note. Dear Farmer Brown, we will exchange our typewriter for electric blankets. Leave them outside the barn door and we will send Duck over with the typewriter. Sincerely, the cows. Farmer Brown decided this was a good deal. He left the blankets next to the barn door and waited for Duck to come with the typewriter. The next morning he got a note. Dear Farmer Brown, the pond is quite boring. We'd like a diving board. Sincerely, the ducks. Click, clack, quack, click, clack, quack, clickety, clack, quack. The end. Right, one of my favorites. So thinking about that book, what pieces of that book are good examples of persuasive writing that you could examine with kids? The letters stated reasons. The letters. So really kind of doing a close reading with the kids of the letters. And the letters state reasons, exactly. So we'd like some blankets. Why? Because the barn is cold. Anything else? Yeah. I feel like the statement about the duck being neutral. Okay. Could lend itself maybe to a, a later a discussion in maybe the higher grades about what's important about the duck being Neutral. You're not trying yeah. to him for anything. That's a really interesting thought. I hadn't thought of that. Okay. Um, anything else? I think with the little guys um, in the K to 2, just the format of the letter, too, would be a good model for them with the salutation, the body, the closing, um, and whatnot, just to be able to show them what a letter looks like. Um, so thinking about that. I would definitely pull um, a mentor text that you love um, and think about how you could use that throughout the unit and refer back to it with kids. Has anyone used one that they've liked thus far? What do you have? I want an iguana. I want an iguana. Okay. Any others? All right. Could you use Alexander and the Turbo Bird? That one? is on the list. Yes, it is. I love that one too. Um, and that's. I think it has to be something that you like so you can show the kids how you can translate it into a good mentor text. So I always try to find something on the list that I feel strongly about. Um, so usually kicking off a unit with a good piece of literature. Um, the next piece we want to do is give kiddos an opportunity to really examine persuasive text. Um, and this comes into the grades three through five unit. These are the samples at the back of the unit, um, and they're real examples of persuasive text. Some of them are from Time for Kids, others are samples, um, student samples. But Alicia, this might be a good example for the kiddo you're working with. Um, what grade? First. Oh, that's little. <laughs> But I think the letters might help. I okay. Think using that um, as a model. Okay. And then thinking about a book. Okay. I think that might help. Good. So. All right, good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a pack um, of some examples of persuasive text. You can work with your partner. And what I'd like you to do is just take some notes on the stickies, which you have at your tables, about any characteristics of persuasive writing that you notice. You can work together if you want um, and just make a list of any characteristics. Put one characteristic on a sticky and then you can put it up here. And if you don't want to come up to put it on the chart, just give me a little signal and I'll put it up for you. So. Dialogue. 
Transition words. Oh, cool. great. Yeah, they, they've come already with uh, suggestions to how to. So she's certainly stating reasons mm -hmm. on why books, textbooks are too heavy and mm -hmm. thick, and why she thinks they should be on the CD now. She's also um, has facts. Mm. Um, student studies have shown that back pain and scoliosis closely related mm -hmm. to weight and pressure. Yeah. That's like from um, like research. Mm -hmm. It's also um, very organized and structured. Mm -hmm. And there's even a concluding um, se uh, section. In summary, I think that's Here's how I've talked to me about that. Um, so with this particular one, I had, here are all my reasons why, but I'm going to go that step further and I'm going to give you a here's how to do it so you don't have to research it. That's cool. It's just, mm, it's okay. Really well done. So like facts, to, like facts or details added in or information provided? A plan. A that's plan? How, that's you add that on? Like, okay. Like, they show like emotion, dialogue, details. That's yeah. Really too deep. Okay. No, definitely. Everything that you see. And go through like, flip through a couple others just quickly and see if there are any other common characteristics or something that really makes it a strong piece. makes me think of like thinking of your audience you know who you're writing to that's huge Susan Lynn, director of the camp. They're like citing a, a reputable, yeah, a reputable like source. I would think, like at this point in the year, if you needed models for your kids, you could show them these, even though they come from the three through five unit. Yeah. Well, you know? what I did was I saved some of the letters that oh, kids wanted to be from last year. Oh, cool. And I shared those with. Oh, them. that's great. Um, and my mentor mm -hmm. text. Yeah. I found it on. I found it on YouTube. And it was oh. good because it, was, it wasn't me reading it. it nice. Was someone else reading it, but it, so it was different expression. That's cool. Is that okay? I, you know, it's really funny you say that because um, I realized that I forgot this book mm -hmm. in my office. Mm -hmm. So I actually I went on to um, what's it called? 
tumble box yeah. to see if it was on there because I was going to do that for you guys. And I think that's fine um, for the, yeah, especially the um, for the initial read, if it's something you wanted to do. I would have the hard copy like in the room just in case if you wanted to go back and refer to it and like the kids wanted to look at it in depth. But I think for the initial read, that's a nice way to get them engaged, definitely. Ladies, anything else? Grab that. Oh, I like that. Okay. All right. So some of the characteristics of persuasive writing um, that you all came up with, and these are things that would translate into an anchor chart that you develop with the class um, over the unit. Um, the topic was introduced clearly. There were supporting reasons and opinions. Um, people provided facts from research. Um, all of the good essays that you looked at had conclusions or summaries. There were time order words or transition words. Emotions. I think that's a really big piece to bring up. Um, and thinking about persuasive writing as something that you have to be, you have to be, have some passion about the topic. Um, Cindy, Cindy, you brought up the word neutral, and this isn't something you can really be neutral about. You have to feel, feel strongly either way. Um, some of them had dialogue or quotes. Um, others had a plan about how to implement the action that the child was talking about. Um, they made a personal connection. Who had, did you have that? Was there like a personal story involved or? There was one that was a letter to the editor. Okay. It was, I'm writing to you about the teacher who made a difference contest. Okay. So the student nominating her teacher. Okay. And I, I think that ties back into the emotional piece. Persuasive writing really is like a personal, emotional form of writing for people. Yeah. This one too was like okay. quite, it was, um, I want to tell you why I'm not a nerd. Okay, okay, so again, right, they can be very personal. Um, somebody mentioned salutation, so maybe it was structured well with a proper format for a letter, which can be important to teach the little guys. Um, again, quotes from reputable sources. Um, <clears throat> One of them even had headings, which to me goes back to that organizational piece, whether you're writing a letter that's organized or whether you're writing an essay. Um, just keep making sure that it's an organized piece of work. So all really important characteristics of persuasive writing. Um, and over the unit, the kids would have the chance to really look at those in depth um, and see if they were able to add those pieces into their own writing. Um, over the course of the different mini lessons. What grade do they stop writing the letter? I know they said they're in the fourth, but do they write K2, they write a letter okay. um, initially. Okay. Um, I think the first, they do two different published pieces. First, they write a letter, persuasive letter, and then they write a persuasive review of something. Okay. So, um, all right. So, the next piece of the unit really involves brainstorming a topic list. Um, and at K to 2, Sophia, I think you probably did this, it's very visual at first. You take a walk around the school and you look at things that you think could be improved in some way. Did anybody from your class have any interesting examples doing the unit now or in the past? Yes, they noticed ceiling tiles okay. um, that were either missing or wet, so okay. they assumed that we have water damage. <laughs> <laughs> In second grade. They noticed that one of the water fountains was filthy. Okay. So, um, what else did they notice? Um, they thought the lobby was dim. Dim, okay. So maybe <laughs> writing to replace lighting or something like that. So really starting off with an experience for them. Um, but after that in K2, they do start writing a review with um, writing persuasive reviews. And they do need to brainstorm a list. Um, in three to five, you typically start off with an unfair list. Lexi, have you done this yet? We did it in fourth grade. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Cindy, have you done it yet? No, I started it. Okay, so I found it a little bit challenging to come up with an unfair list of my own, like as an adult, um, with things that were appropriate for kids. 
I kept going back to um, Catholic school. I went to Catholic school, K to 12, and a lot of the things came up from that. Like, I feel like priests, uh, women should be able to be priests. And like, that's not something you'd share with kids. So you definitely have to prep um, your unfair list beforehand. So I made one that would be kid friendly um, that I'll share with you. Um, so my unfair list, um, very much based on my life, the cost of sports classes for a toddler um, are astronomical. I think it's incredibly unfair to have to pay $150 to send your two-year-old to soccer. <laughs> um, second thing, not being able to bring water or healthy food into a movie theater. It makes me batty. I think it's unfair that you can't bring a bottle of water in. And then the third thing I think is really unfair has to do with Apple. Um, the fact that iPods can't sync with more than one computer makes me really insane. Um, so I just don't think it's fair. <laughs> Question? No, I have, um, I have Apple TV. So okay, okay. Um, so it took me a while to brainstorm kid-appropriate examples. Yeah. I had a hard time, too. You and, did? Yeah, and um, I had one about downloading music as well. You did? And I, yeah. Yeah. And then um, I had, which I don't agree with, but it was like something I could, it was easy to talk about with the kids. Right. Um, I said that I think it's unfair that teachers um, can't wear jeans every day. Okay. So it was just like a good example. I could think of a lot of arguments and things. So even though it wasn't like I, I, I like dressing nice, I think it makes me more professional. Right. It had two sides. Exactly. There were a lot of reasons. So that's the one that I ended up running. With. And I think that's a really good point. Um, it might not be something you're truly passionate about or ag necessarily agree with, but if you can really speak right. to it and kind of, you know, model it as a teacher, mm -hmm. it's okay. Um, so if you haven't created an unfair list, I want you to take a few minutes um, to go ahead and jot down some ideas. Or in your case, you'd be doing the reviews. Mm -hmm. So thinking of things that you would review, um, either pos most likely positively. K to t yeah. Okay, so K to two, they do persuasive reviews. Things like, um, I've seen a couple, like why Lay's potato chips are the best potato chips ever. Um, really specific things that you can write to. So again, you definitely need to do the prep beforehand to be able to think about the appropriate topics and the reasons behind it. And it could be favorite book as well. Yes. Absolutely, it could be favorite book, but very specific. Um, you know, my favorite book is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn because, um, and whatnot. In first grade, it's one reason, whereas in second grade, you might, you're building just three. Mm -hmm. okay. And right now, just for this piece, just think of a list of things that you could write about, um, that you could review, things that are your favorites, things, something like that. Okay. Are you working with any three through five? Okay, so yeah, it would just be the um, reviews of favorite things. Last year we did restaurant reviews. That's fine. Kids loved it. I bet they did. I, I loved writing. And I think that's the thing. Sophia just said a restaurant review. If you love going out to eat, mm -hmm. then that's something fun that you can write easily to. I found the unfair challenging. I just feel like my topics aren't appropriate for kids. I know. Like I know. That I would I it took me a while. It took me a while to come up with them. I mean, I don't oh, like that, oh, that yeah. my building is yeah. That's so weird. Cool. I don't want to insult Right, so right. <laughs> right, exactly. That's exactly. So what do you have, Lexi? Um, school starts at 8.05. So I was thinking mm -hmm. about the start of school, yeah. too. and I, Well, no, that was one of my thoughts. Just like you think of, I know some of the schools in the Midwest are having high school start later and the younger kids start earlier um, just because of sleep patterns and whatnot. That was one thought I had. Yeah, they're just piloting some 
in the Midwest, I want to say in Minnesota they started it. Has It's really hard on the other end though with athletic schedules yeah. and jobs, um, but something to think about. Um, the driving age is 16. That's an example in the book um, that the driving age is 16. That's an unfair. I agree. I agree. I know. I'd say 18. Um, but I know. Not appropriate. I know. That's the thing. You really do have to kind of carefully choose and be prepared. And I found that was just one of the you know one of the things with writers' workshop when you're planning out the unit to come brainstorm everything beforehand. I it takes a while. Somebody will say it, yeah. <clears throat> but can they, I, I would question, can they back it up with good reasons? Yeah, you know, and if they can write a good persuasive letter, that's the point of the activity or persuasive essay. Yeah. I think it's yeah. Topic, it might be something like pizza is the best lunch. That would be sort of easy to. Yes. So initially they're writing a persuasive letter um, based on something in their school that they would like to change. And then the second activity they do is to write a persuasive review about something that they are passionate about. And so. when you're framing it for the list, it wouldn't be my favorite book, it would be the best book you ever um, I think it would be something like that, or it could be my favorite. I think the best, something like that, would be more appropriate for persuasive. How many do you have? Four. Okay. I couldn't get beyond that. How many do you have, Cindy? Um, well, two I still can miss. Okay. No, well, that's fine. Of, that's fine. And then I added, it's not fair. Like, sometimes you can only buy things in limited quantities. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. A stretch, I know. but No, but I really did find this activity to be a yeah, stretch. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you can take that list and be able to use it with kids, and you'll have your list, too, to be ready to go. So the next piece um, after kiddos are able to create their list, and I feel like it would be easier for a child to create an unfair list um, than an adult. Um, they're going to move into drafting. Um, and we want to take a look at some of the graphic organizers that we can use for drafting. Um, I pulled an additional one that I especially want my SPED friends to look at. Okay. So within the K-2 program, and you have copies of these, there are two graphic organizers um, that we can use. This one is specifically for writing a persuasive letter. Um, and this one is a bit different. It has the opinion and then the reasons branching off of it. So both really good resources to have. Um, I'm a big fan of graphic organizers. So even before the kids start you know, drafting their formal essay or letter, they could use this to help them plan. In three through five, there's one that's slightly different. Um, it has a lead built in and an ending, um, which are part of, there are many lessons on a catchy lead and a strong ending. Um, so you might think about your kids and where they are. Are they ready for that, you know, if it's a third grader who's never written anything in this form, or do they need, you know, maybe the second, the second grade one, and then they'll progress into this as their topic even progresses, um, you know, developing the lead, developing the ending, um, or as they go through the unit. The other one that I wanted to remind you about was um, the POW tree from Margaret's training on struggling writers. Um, and 